California is huge in many ways. The biggest movies come out of Hollywood. The biggest tech companies call Silicon Valley home. The best American wines come from Napa Valley. And the world's tallest trees can be found among the skyscraping strands of giant coastal redwoods. But not all great things in California are huge. Sometimes, greatness can be found in the tiniest of places, like a tiny, piddly petri dish at the University of California, San Diego. Scientists have developed the first synthetic cells that can reproduce themselves over and over and over. Inside Science. There's been some really elegant work done by uh, numerous researchers that have shown that they can create synthetic cells that can reproduce. But what typically happens is that reproduction ability is short-lived. And after maybe a few reproductions, these synthetic cells stop doing that. That's something that our group was really interested in pursuing, is can we create a synthetic cell that could continually reproduce if fed the appropriate food, essentially. One of the really exciting points about our work is that if you feed them the right type of um, food, they will basically continually reproduce. And so one really key thing about our synthetic cells is the catalyst has the ability to self-reproduce as well. And so as you make more and more synthetic cells, the catalyst reproduces and replenishes itself. And for that reason, the synthetic cells can reproduce indefinitely. So if you look at current living cells, right, you know, we look at uh, mammalian cells or, or, or bacterial cells and look at them divide. It's a very beautiful, clean process and it will literally make two identical copies more or less of itself. And, and you can and witness that and it's well orchestrated. Our systems are much, 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 much simpler. And so it's actually, you know, to, to be very frank about it, it's kind of a mess. Um, all sorts of stuff is, is happening. These membranes are blebbing and little bits are coming off here and there. Some of them are big, some of them are small. And so it's, it, it looks kind of like, like a frenzy, essentially, of these lipid membranes sprouting off of each other. Often I get a question of, well, what are the applications? And we're still a long ways off from that because I think sometimes some of us in the field, we joke that what we're making is not life, it's limping life, you know, it's not really, have, it doesn't really have those amazing properties that we see, you know, authentic, you know, living cells have. One reason we are interested in this area of research is we want to gain understanding. So it's still a virtual black box trying to understand how did cells come about in the very first place? I mean, what were the basic principles, chemical and physical, that led to sets of non-living molecules becoming something that we call life? One way that we think that we can really truly understand these kinds of systems is if we can build them from the bottom up. The tiny world of growing cells in a lab is moving forward and may eventually get bigger, maybe even California large. This is Inside Science. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.